The National Weather Service in Des Moines has issued a tornado warning for southeastern Mahaska County and south of central Iowa and Wapolo County in southeast Iowa until 2.45 this afternoon. At 1.59 p.m., a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located seven miles south of Eddyville or nine miles east of Albia, moving northeast at 45 miles per hour. Hazards with the storm, a tornado, quarter-sized hail, and 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. This was a radar-indicated rotation. Some of the impacts with the storm, flying debris, dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed with the storm. Damage to rooftops, windows, and vehicles could also occur. Locations impacted with this include Atumwa, Eddyville, Atumwa Industrial Airport, Fremont, Blakesburg, Agency, Kirkville, Chillicothe, and Oskaloosa Municipal Airport. Once again, the National Weather Service in Des Moines has issued a tornado warning for southeastern Mahaska County and south-central Iowa and Wapolo County in southeast Iowa until 2.45 this afternoon. Service in Chicago has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for West Central DuPage County in Northeast Illinois, Kane County in Northeast Illinois, until 5.30 p.m. At 4.34 p.m., a severe thunderstorm was located near Sugar Grove and moving northeast at 20 miles per hour. Hazard, 60 miles per hour wind gusts and quarter-size hail. Source, radar indicated. Impact, hail damage to vehicles is expected. Expect wind damage to roofs, siding and trees. Locations impacted include Batavia, Geneva, St. Charles, DuPage Airport, West Chicago, Wheaton, Sugar Grove, Elburn, North Aurora, Warrenville, Wayne and Winfield. Other locations affected Aurora University, College of DuPage, DuPage County Fairgrounds, Fermi Lab, Illinois Math and Science Academy, Kane County Cougars Ballpark. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. I even ran into him once in Chicago. It was a good story, but I'm not going to get...
Weather Service in Chicago has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Lake County in Northeast Illinois, Eastern McHenry County in Northeast Illinois, until 6 o'clock p.m. At 5.13 p.m., a severe thunderstorm was located near Island Lake and moving east at 30 miles per hour. Hazard, 60 miles per hour wind gusts and quarter size hail. Source, radar indicated. Impact, hail damage to vehicles is expected. Expect wind damage to roofs, siding and trees. Locations impacted include Wyaconda, Long Lake, Brown Lake, Lake Villa, Lake Zork, Venetian Village, Grays Lake, Mundelein, Long Grove, Gages Lake, Libertyville, Vernon Hills, Buffalo Grove, Gurney, Lincolnshire, Park City, Riverwoods, Waukegan, Beach Park and North Chicago. Other locations affected, College of Lake County, Great Lakes Naval Training Center, Illinois Beach State Park, Lake County Fielders Baseball, Lake County Illinois Fairgrounds, Lake Forest College. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Balls and jumbo-sized rackets, Whammo Track Ball is on sale now for just $8.88. Johnston, Clive, Indianola, Altoona, Waukee, Boone, Norwalk, Pleasant Hill, Grimes, Perry, Nevada, Winterset, Jefferson, Adel, and Greenfield are all in the path of this severe thunderstorm. We also have anybody who is on Interstate 35 between mile markers 47 and 72. Anyone between mile markers 87 and 139 on Interstate 35. You are in the path of this storm. If you are on Interstate 80 between mile marker 91 and uh, near mile marker 91 and between mile markers 93 and 149, anyone on Interstate 235 as well, you are in the path of this storm. And again, remain alert for the possibility of tornadoes, which can develop quickly from severe thunderstorms. If you spot a tornado, go up once into the basement or a small central room inside a sturdy structure, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. And do be aware that these can produce tornadoes as well as widespread and significant wind damage. Tornadoes are not immediately likely with this severe thunderstorm warning. However, we do have that continued threat of a tornado under the tornado warning that is also under in effect right now to the northwest. It is best to get to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. The storms can cause very serious injury and significant property damage. Straight line winds can produce just as much damage as a tornado, depending on the location. So again, a severe thunderstorm warning is now in effect for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, eastern Guthrie, eastern Adair, southern Hamilton, Polk, northwestern Union, and eastern Greene counties. 
in central Iowa. That severe thunderstorm warning is now in effect until 11 o'clock this evening. That's in addition to a tornado warning in effect for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, northeastern Guthrie, and southeastern Green counties. That tornado warning is in effect until 1045 tonight. There's also a tornado warning in effect for western Dallas and southeastern Guthrie counties until 1015. So we have a tornado warning in effect for western Dallas and southeastern Guthrie until 1015 this evening. We have a tornado warning in effect for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, northeastern Guthrie, and southeastern Greene counties until 1045. And now we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, eastern Guthrie, eastern Adair, southern Hamilton, Polk, northwestern Union, and eastern Greene counties until 11 o'clock tonight. Those are all of the uh, warnings that are currently in effect for this area. So we do have all of this taking place. We also have a continued threat of flash flooding potential that we are on the lookout for as well. There are flash flood warnings currently in effect for southwestern Pottawatomie County until 1245, southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties. Flash flood warnings for southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties until 330 this evening or until 3.30, rather, in the morning, is where the flash flood warning remains in effect out there. And again, we do have the tornadic threat that is presently in effect that we are trying to keep our eye on here as well, so that we do keep you alert to the fact that we do have that tornado warning in effect right now in central Iowa. So we do have that tornado set of tornado warnings that are in effect, and we do want people to take cover, especially in southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, northeastern Guthrie, and southeastern Green counties until 10.45, this is a very serious threat, and we also want folks in western Dallas and southeastern Guthrie counties to be taking cover. That tornado warning remains in effect until 1015. Going to take a moment here to uh, reset. We'll be back in just a moment. If we can take just a moment here, and we'll be back on News Radio 1040 WHO. Van and Bonnie camp out in the brand new cabins at Jester Park. Stop by Monday morning, May 19th. Who knows? You might even get a s'more. 5 to 9 a.m. on News Radio 1040 WHO. Companion Connection. I adopted this rabbit. He's very smart. But one day, I decided to rearrange things in his cage. I moved his hay dish, his pellet dish, and his water dish. And about 45 minutes later, my husband came in. He said, Bunny Boy's putting them back where they were. He actually moved them back where they were before. He has a mind of his own. We're just really enjoying him. Companion Connection, Saturday mornings at 8 on News Radio 1040 WHO. 10, 10 severe weather. 40 WHO. As we continue facing severe weather as it's working its way through central Iowa, we do have tornado warnings that are presently in effect for the western part of the metro area. So let's recap where we're at. Tornado warning in effect for southwestern Boone County, northwestern Dallas County, northeastern Guthrie County, and southeastern Greene counties. All of those areas under a tornado warning until 1045 this evening. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located near over Lake Panorama. It's about seven miles northeast of Guthrie Center, moving northeast at 40 miles an hour. This is radar indicated rotation. We are concerned, though, about the threat for flying debris to be dangerous to those caught without shelter right now, mobile homes to be damaged or destroyed, as well as damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles occurring. Tree damage is, of course, also likely. Again, to recap, areas in the path of this tornado include Perry, Panora, Lake Panorama, Grand Junction, Rippey, Yale, Jamaica, Dawson, Berkeley, Lake Slough Game Management Area, Springbrook State Park, and the Perry Municipal Airport. Heavy rainfall, once again, could hide this tornado, so do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover immediately. Tornadoes are, again, extremely difficult to see and confirm at night. So do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover immediately. We do not wish to take any chances with this. It's time to act immediately. The uh, tornado warning that had been in effect then, the separate one that was in effect uh, for a portion of western Dallas County and uh, northwestern Dallas County and east central Guthrie counties, that one that had been in effect until 1015 is being allowed to expire. The storm has moved out of that immediate area, but there is still the possibility for additional tornadic activity with this thunderstorm. A tornado watch is in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for a good portion of the state of Iowa. And there is, again, that tornado warning that is in effect. The old one has been allowed to expire. The newer one remains in effect, and that one is in effect, again, until 1045 this evening. 
1045, we have a tornado warning that's in effect, again, for southwestern Boone and northwestern Dallas County, as well as northeastern Guthrie County. All of those areas remain under that tornado warning uh, that is in effect right now and in effect remaining in place until 1045. So that tornado warning, again, for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, northeastern Guthrie, as well as southeastern Greene counties, that tornado warning remains in effect until 1045. So that is a potential for tornado. We do need everyone in that area to take cover immediately, get to the lowest level of your home or business, get to a small interior room away from windows on the lowest floor you can get to. Do not be outside right now. Do not be trying to spot the tornado. Do not be trying to travel in any way, shape, or form. If you are in a vehicle right now, we want you to get to safe, substantial shelter at this time. This is not a risk worth taking in any way, shape, or form, and flying debris could be extremely dangerous to anyone caught without shelter. Mobile homes could be damaged or destroyed. Anyone who is outdoors could be severely injured by any kind of tornadic activity as well as any kind of debris that may go flying along with it. We've got a history of producing very strong storms with this as well as very heavy rainfall, so we do maintain the threat, too, of flash flooding. We have a number of areas under a flash flood warning at this hour, including southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties under a flash flood warning until 3.30 in the morning. Southwestern Pottawatomie County is under a flash flood warning until 12.45 in the morning. And again, a severe thunderstorm warning is also in effect to our west out in southeastern Mills, northwestern Page, western Montgomery, and northern Fremont counties. They're looking at the possibility of baseball-sized hail along with that severe thunderstorm warning. Additionally, a severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 11 o'clock this evening, that severe thunderstorm warning, which brings with it the possibility of 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts as well as nickel-sized hail, is in effect for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, Eastern Guthrie, Eastern Adair, Southern Hamilton, Polk, Northwestern Union, and Eastern Greene counties. That is a severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect until 11 o'clock this evening with severe thunderstorms located along a line extending from seven miles north of Jefferson down to Stewart to eight miles northwest of Green Valley Lake, moving to the east at 50 miles an hour. Again, we are looking at the potential for 60 mile an hour wind gusts and nickel sized hail. The areas in the path of that storm include Des Moines, Ames, West Des Moines, Ankeny, Urbandale, Johnston, Clive, Indianola, Altoona, Waukee, Boone, Norwalk, Pleasant Hill, Grimes, Perry, Nevada, Winterset, Jefferson, Adel, and Greenfield. In addition, anyone who is on Interstate 35 between mile markers 47 and 72 and between mile markers 87 and 139 is in the path of the storm. Interstate 80 between mile markers 91 and 149, you are in the path of that storm as well. Anyone on Interstate 235 also in the path of that storm and is now covered by that severe thunderstorm warning. Do remain alert as well, again, for the possibility of tornadoes. Tornadoes can develop quickly from severe thunderstorms. If you spot one, go at once into the basement or a small interior room in a sturdy structure. For your protection in general, don't wait to discover one. Don't wait to spot one. Go to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building at this time. Intense thunderstorm lines could produce brief tornadoes. Also, significant wind damage, even if it is not tornadic, that strong wind could also create very serious damage and the risk of flying debris and injury from that. So though a tornado is not immediately likely in the severe thunderstorm area, it is best to get to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Those storms have caused serious injury or can and produce significant property damage. A tornado watch is in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for a good portion of the state of Iowa. So a very large portion of the state of Iowa is under a tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the morning. That does include central Iowa. It does include the Des Moines metro area. And, of course, we do have a tornado warning that is in effect for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, northeastern Guthrie, and southern or southeastern Greene counties in central Iowa. That tornado warning in effect until 1045 this evening. So we do have all of that taking place, and of course we continue to have severe thunderstorm warnings out to our west, where again Fremont, Mills, Montgomery, and Page counties do have a severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect for another 15 minutes with the threat of baseball-sized hail, again in southeastern Mills, northwestern Page, western Montgomery, and northern Fremont counties. Flash flood warnings in effect for southwestern Pottawatomie County until 1245, and a flash flood warning in effect until 3.30 in the morning for southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties. Again, that entire area under a flash flood warning right now due to the very heavy rainfall that's been occurring with these storms. So we do have very heavy rainfall. It's also happening in a very intense period of time. 
that is the uh, grave the grave threat that is out there because especially at night it can be very difficult to see when bridges and roads have been washed out or see when water covers roadways that can be a very serious hazard and a very great deal of danger to people now the good news here we just have gotten an update from the national weather service that the tornado warning for northeastern guthrie county has been canceled so north northeastern guthrie county has been removed from that tornado warning that we've been covering here for central iowa However, even though that section of the tornado, or that tornado warned area has moved along, that severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado now located seven miles west of Perry, moving to the northeast at 40 miles an hour. So it remains in effect a tornado warning until 1045 for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, and southeastern Greene County. Flying debris will be dangerous to anyone caught without shelter, so mobile homes and are an extremely dangerous place to be at this time. Mobile homes could be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles could occur. Tree damage is also very likely. Perry, you are in the path of this storm. It'll be about seven minutes from now. They're expecting it to hit around 1025. Other locations now in the path of the tornadic thunderstorm include Berkeley, Dawson, Rippey, and the Perry Municipal Airport. So again, take cover now. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building and avoid windows. If you're in a mobile home, a vehicle, or outdoors, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. We also have a very serious threat that heavy rainfall could be hiding this tornado. So again, do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover now. They are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night. Do not wait to see or hear that tornado. Take cover immediately. So that is, however canceled now the the good portion of that is that it was canceled for the section of that tornado warning that was in guthrie county that has been canceled now so northeastern guthrie county is out from that threat however it does remain in effect for southwestern boone northwestern dallas and southeastern green counties as the tornado or the potentially tornadic thunderstorm is located about seven miles to the west of perry moving to the northeast at 40 miles an hour if you have updates on that or if you have uh, you have any updates that you would like to give us on the potential for that severe weather, or if you've encountered any of that severe weather, you can feel free to send it in to the American Toppers and Accessories text line at 515-989-1040, where standard data and message rates do apply. But you can send those reports in if you've got power outages, if you've seen damage, or you've encountered large hail or anything else similar to that, or the potential for that flash flooding. We would appreciate those reports, again, on the American Toppers and Accessories text line at 515-989-1040. Also, the flash flood warning that's in effect for a, a portion of west central Iowa. We've got southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties under that flash flood warning until 3.30 in the morning. We've had reports that uh, they've seen two inches of rainfall falling within an hour in the city of Atlantic, and that uh, street flooding is already occurring, and that a good portion of that area is seeing the uh, street flooding taking place with water up to the curbs. So we are looking at uh, very serious potential for that as it's the same cluster of storms that are now moving their way into central Iowa. So we're keeping our eye on that for you here on News Radio 1040 WHO. So do be aware at night that the threat there, of course, for any kind of uh, roads, roads or bridges to be washed out or for moving water to be in place, is very difficult to uh, see and anticipate at night. So we do need to make sure that we're keeping our eye on that right now. So do be aware that at any time at night, if you are crossing any kind of roads or uh, bridges, there is the potential if there's any water over the roadway, it could be enough to sweep your vehicle away. It also could be such that it has washed out the road beneath or taken the bridge out. So do not try to cover or cross any rain-covered or water-covered bridges or roads at night. This is an extremely dangerous situation, especially with the potential for flash flooding with very heavy rainfall rates on ground that, frankly, has been saturated over the course of the uh, last weekend here as we've had a bit of rain and a bit of storm activity taking place over the last four or five days. Uh, there is enough now on the ground that it may be very quick for the creeks and rivers to rise in different places, so we don't want anybody to take any chances with that or to take any undue risks. Safety first, that is our top priority, and of course we don't want anybody to uh, find themselves in an, a dangerous situation. And it only takes a couple of inches of moving water to sweep a vehicle right off the roadway. So we do not want anybody to take any chances, particularly at night when it's just an especially dangerous situation. Uh, we do not wish to take any kind of chances with that. And again, the tornado warnings that are in effect are of our primary concern right at the moment because of the immediacy of them. However, it doesn't mean that we want to take anything away from the risk of the uh, impact that we could have from other storms taking place as well. And uh, certainly don't want to take anything away from the threat that is, of course, still posed by the flash flooding that we're seeing as a potential in a, a good portion 
uh, of central Iowa and west central Iowa, especially as we've seen these storms now moving through. Again, that tornado warning, though, that we are most concerned about, very urgent right now, the tornado warning that remains in effect until 1045 for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, and southeastern Greene counties. That severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado located seven miles west of Perry, moving to the northeast at 40 miles an hour. Radar indicated rotation with this storm. Flying debris could be very dangerous to anyone caught without shelter, and mobile homes could face damage or destruction. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles is going to occur with a storm like this. Tree damage is also very likely. Again, this dangerous storm is expected near Perry in the next two or three minutes. Other locations that could be in the path of this tornadic thunderstorm include Berkeley, Dawson, Rippey, and the Perry Municipal Airport. So again, do take cover immediately. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building and avoid windows. If you are in a mobile home or in a vehicle or outdoors, let's get to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from any kind of flying debris. That heavy rainfall that we are anticipating could hide that tornado. So do not wait to see or hear the tornado take cover immediately. Tornadoes, again, are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado before taking shelter. Simply take shelter immediately. Do not take any chances uh, with this storm. Again, we also have a severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, eastern Guthrie, eastern Adair, southern Hamilton, Polk, northwestern Union, and eastern Greene counties. That's Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 11 o'clock tonight, with severe thunderstorms moving their way into central Iowa with 60 mile an hour wind gusts, as well as hail up to the size of nickels. This is radar indicated, and we do expect damage to roofs, sidings, and trees. That does include Des Moines, Ames, West Des Moines, Ankeny, Urbandale, Johnston, Clive, Indianola, Altoona, Waukee, Boone, Norwalk, Pleasant Hill, Grimes, Perry, Nevada, Winterset. Jefferson, Adel, and Greenfield. It also includes anyone traveling on Interstate 35 between mile markers 47 and 139, anyone on Interstate 80 between mile marker 91 and mile marker 149, as well as, of course, anyone on Interstate 235 here in the Des Moines area. Remain alert, again, for the possibility of tornadoes with these storms as well, as they can develop very quickly from severe thunderstorms. And if you do spot a tornado or you do have any indication that one is near, get to an interior room in a small central room in a basement or the lowest level that you can inside a sturdy structure. A car is not a safe place to be, nor is outdoors. Moving into an interior room on the lowest floor of a building, some kind of substantial shelter is of primary importance at this time. Intense thunderstorms can also produce brief tornadoes and widespread significant wind damage. Again, we don't know that any kind of tornadoes are immediately likely with that severe thunderstorm complex moving its way into central Iowa. However, the time is now to get to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building as the storms could cause very serious injury and significant property damage. Again, a tornado watch remains in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for most of the state of Iowa. And, of course, we also have the potential for a flash flood threat throughout a good portion of the state of Iowa, as we've had two, two series now of storms working their way through the state. We had the earlier set that moved their way through in the earlier part of the day, uh, mainly in the pre-noon hours here in central Iowa. It took a good portion of time for those to make their way through the eastern part of the state. And at the same time as the storms were moving out of the state to the east, we had a new set moving their way in from the west. And these, again, are very significant, very strong storms that have carried a lot of energy potential as well as a great deal of precipitation as they move their way in from the west, as they have moved their way in from Nebraska, where they produced tornadoes as well out there. So that's what we're looking at the threat for here, and we're trying to keep our eye on top of that. And, of course, that severe thunderstorm warning. We don't want to forget our friends out to the west who are in southeastern Mills, northwestern Page, western Montgomery, and northeastern Fremont counties where at 10:12, a severe thunderstorm was located near Emerson, or about 35 miles north of Tarkio, moving to the northeast at 35 miles an hour. Previously, we were facing baseball-sized hail. It looks now like they are saying that golf ball-sized hail is more of a threat, but again, that is from trained weather spotters, and golf ball-sized hail is still quite enough to do significant damage and cause injury. Anybody who is outdoors could be injured. Same for pets and other animals. Do expect damage to roofs, siding, windows, and vehicles. Red Oak, Malvern, Stanton, Emerson, Randolph, Hastings, Imogene, and Coburg, you're all in the path of that severe thunderstorm warning that is located out in southwestern Iowa. Anyone on Highway 34 between mile markers 20 and 42 is also in the path of the storm. Anyone on Highway 59 in Iowa between mile markers 19 and 34 is also in the path of the storm. So for your protection, get to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building, and let's get away from windows if we can. 
Uh, anybody in that area, again, southeastern Mills, northwestern Page, western Montgomery, and northeastern Fremont counties, you are in the path of a severe thunderstorm that is producing golf ball-sized hail reported and confirmed by trained weather spotters who have uh, already reported those to the National Weather Service. And so Radio 1040 WHO. Again, we have a tornado warning now in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk County. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado for your protection. Move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Again, this is a tornado warning now in effect for south for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties in central Iowa. Tornado warning in effect until 11 o'clock tonight with a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado reported now near Dallas Center or 8 miles northwest of Grimes, moving to the east at 45 miles an hour. We do continue to have a severe thunderstorm warning that is also in effect for a broader area surrounding this tornado warning. 
That severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect until 11 o'clock for southwestern or for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, Eastern Guthrie, Eastern Adair, Southern Hamilton, Polk, Northwestern Union, and Eastern Greene counties. At 1031, severe thunderstorms were located along a line extending from 11 miles northwest of Boone to Clive to near the Avenue of the Saints Event Center, moving east at 50 miles an hour. 60 mile an hour wind gusts along with hail the size of quarters is expected with the severe thunderstorm that is again covering or the severe thunderstorm warned area that includes southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, eastern Guthrie, eastern Adair, southern Hamilton, Polk, northwestern Union, and eastern Greene counties. All of those areas presently under a severe thunderstorm warning with the uh, possibility here of very large or very strong winds, let's say, again, 60 mile an hour wind gusts, along with hail the size of quarters. Severe thunderstorms are expected now near Urbandale, Grimes, Windsor Heights, and Valley West Mall around 1035. Johnston, Sailorville, Merle Hay Mall, Drake Stadium, Knapp Center, the Iowa Event Center downtown, Principal Park, and Des Moines International Airport around 1040. Des Moines, Ankeny, and the Iowa State Fairgrounds around 1045. We're also looking for Altoona, Pleasant Hill, Bondurant, and Adventureland, Prairie Meadows, to see this around 1050. Indianola and Story City should be anticipating these storms around 1055. Mitchellville and Roland should be seeing them around 11 o'clock this evening. So that's what we're anticipating again, severe thunderstorms that are working their way through with 60 mile an hour wind gusts and hail up to the size of quarters. It includes Interstate 35 between mile markers 47 and 72 and between mile markers 87 and 139. It includes the area between Interstate 80 between mile markers 94 and 149, as well as Interstate 235 between mile markers 1 and 14. And again, we are remaining alert for the possibility of tornadoes as well, as we do presently have tornado warnings in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties until 11 o'clock tonight. So those are all taking place right now. Okay, Brian, thanks. Uh, we have a uh, report from Assistant News Director WHO, Sue Danielson, right now. Hi, uh, hi guys. Uh, doing a great job. I just wanted to come in and uh, chime in and tell you a little bit about what's going on in the northwest edge of the metro. Starting to get a uh, little bit of, obviously, the storms are rolling in here, uh, a lot of lightning, and uh, very still. Um, I think we're getting a few raindrops on the northwest edge of the metro at this point. If not, we will be very soon, I think, uh, judging from the radar and what you guys have been telling us. Um, certainly, we're getting a slight breeze picking up, but it was just, I mean, just 30 seconds ago, it was just really still and close and just real humid feeling, just the kind of feeling you get right before a big storm rolls through. So. All the stuff that you've been telling us, it looks like it is headed uh, at least partially in this direction. I don't know if that's uh, going to slide a little bit to the north, it sounds like, though, Brian. Um, but then as I look up in the clouds, I can see it almost looks like some of the cloud cover is sort of, sort of just drifting straight uh, east. Wind is really starting to pick up here just as I'm talking to you. I'm seeing it in a pretty dramatic change here. Uh, so uh, we might be getting some heavy rain here fairly soon. Certainly, as I mentioned, a lot of lightning, uh, and uh, this is this storm is moving in <laughs> really quickly. Just just when I picked up the phone to call you, I mean, it was just still and not a breeze at all. And now there's really the, the uh, trees are starting to move, but branches are. I'm not seeing anything uh, real strong yet. But certainly, uh, breezy conditions are picking up, and I bet you any minute now we're going to see. <laughs> some of those storms and the rain that you've been talking about roll through here in the Des Moines area. I think I'm going to step back inside because it's just really <laughs> good out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down in the basement. But That's anyway, I'll, uh, I'll call back later and give you a little update and uh, just wanted to let you know what's going on in the northwest part of the metro. And, uh, yeah, it, this storm is rolling through right now. But no, no heavy rain yet. Oh, yeah, it's starting to rain. Yeah, we're starting to get right now. We're seeing the uh, the radar sweeps, and it's looking uh, so like it's it's now crossed over uh, Highway 17. It's now working its way toward about 141. So if you're in that kind of uh, yeah. east-west corridor, that's about where it's hitting now. So yeah, we're in the northwest part of we're in Urbandale, and it is uh, definitely it's picking up, and this rain starting to come. A lot of lightning. I'd be concerned about the lightning too, and uh, hopefully we won't get a lot of. Hopefully these things will fall apart quickly. We won't get any tornadoes for heaven's sake, but. Uh, 
certainly we're going to have a bumpy night tonight. Definitely, and it looks like that is going to continue. It looks like we do have at least a little bit of good news here in that the uh, the one tornado warning that was uh, in effect, that had been in effect there for a uh, portion of uh, Boone, Dallas, and Greene counties has been allowed to expire. They are, in fact, it looks like they are canceling it then. The tornado warning that had been in effect for southwestern Boone, northwestern Dallas, and southeastern Greene counties has been canceled, so that's the good news there. Okay. So that, uh, that storm which had prompted that warning is now weakened below the severe limits and exited the warned area, so they have canceled that warning. But we do still have, of course, that tornado watch in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning. So as you mentioned, Sue, uh, the basement might be a good place to be anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, we don't have a tornado warning for Polk at this point. Well, no, that's, that is a separate warning, and that one, uh, I believe, does remain in effect here. That hasn't, uh, hasn't been allowed to expire. So we do still have that one that remains in effect. And again, that is a, a tornado warning that is in effect uh, for southwestern Boone, or I'm sorry, I, I have to correct myself. We had a separate one that was in effect there. So we do still have the tornado warning that's in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties. That tornado warning does remain in effect until 11 o'clock. So that one does. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very good judge of wind speed, but uh, I can tell you it's certainly very windy. It's, just, um, it's, it's really picking up out here. Definitely. Well, uh, certainly taking cover is, is the, the best choice to do right now, that's for sure, uh, and definitely to be judicious at this stage. So, and again, anybody who's out of doors, anybody who's traveling right now, we do have, of course, a lot of folks who would be on the interstate highways at this hour. It's a good time to find substantial shelter and get out of the uh, path of any of these storms because it does cover a good portion of central Iowa right now. Uh, and we do yeah. look at the potential for those 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts as well. So, Yeah, it just had our lights flicker, too, so we might be seeing some, hopefully we won't have any massive outages and all that's uh, something to watch out for. Get your flashlights ready. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and a battery-powered radio so we can keep yeah. you updated <laughs> here at WHA. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Thank you very much, Sue. Sue Danielson reporting in for us here on News Radio 1040 WHO with an update on the uh, severe weather. Uh, from her perspective, as she's seeing it out in that direction, of course, we'd be happy to hear from you as well. It's uh, also easy if you'd like to send us a text with an update on what you're seeing. You can text us on the American Toppers and Accessories text line. That number is 515-989-1040. Again, that is 515-989-1040. You can text us. Again, standard data and message rates do apply. But you can let us know what you're seeing at this stage in your part of central Iowa or other portions of the uh, area. We're getting a text here saying that there are sirens going off on the south side of town right now, which is entirely uh, possible if we're seeing uh, plenty of strong uh, winds working their way through. Again, they will activate those sirens. It will not necessarily require a uh, tornado in place. They will activate those sirens in the case of very strong winds as well because, again, straight-line winds, very strong winds, can create the very same kind of damage that a, a tornado can. Uh, without the circulation. It doesn't uh, necessarily have to have any of that going on. So getting reports out, sirens going off on the south side of town, and so we, of course, appreciate those reports, and you can send yours as well to the American Toppers and Accessories text line here at WHO Radio at 515-989-1040, where standard data and message rates do apply. I'm Brian Gongle. It is 1039 here on News Radio 1040 WHO as we are watching the severe weather working its way into central Iowa and working its way particularly uh, into the Des Moines area at this stage. So we do have, again, a tornado warning. That is our uh, primary concern at this hour, is that tornado warning in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties in central Iowa in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. Okay, uh, Brian, we do have a somebody standing by in Ames with a report and a special weather statement just in for Guthrie, Dallas, Adair, Madison, Adams, Union, including the cities of Guthrie Center, Panora, Bayard, Casey, Perry, Waukee, Adel, Greenfield, Stewart, Adel, or Adair, Fontenelle, Winterset, Earlham, Corning, and Creston. Heavy rainfall may lead to localized ponding of water. A line of training storms will produce heavy rainfall over portions of western Iowa. This may lead to localized ponding of water in low-lying areas and places of poor drainage. If you're asked to drive with caution, do not drive into flooded roads. Report any flooding to the National Weather Service and local law enforcement. It's 1040 at News Radio 1040 WHO, and uh, what would you like to tell us uh, from Ames? Uh, just uh, lightning, like that lady just said, uh, just getting ready to go to work, and it was just still out there, and like she said, the humidity, and we're seeing a lot of lightning, not much rain yet, but it's definitely coming. Actually, like she said, it's just starting to rain here, too. <laughs> 
anticipating that, and of course, then that uh, severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect does include you folks up in uh, Story County, so we do want you to uh, be aware and be alert to this, because we are looking at the potential for those 60 mile an hour wind gusts and uh, nickel sized hail, so you're seeing, okay. yeah, you haven't seen that you coming guys, down, but it's coming, You guys right? do a great job. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate the call. Bye. It is uh, 1041 here on News Radio 1040 WHO. I'm Brian Gongle here with uh, coverage of the severe weather. It's working its way through central Iowa at this stage. And we're uh, keeping updates here on, on what's going on. As uh, Jim mentioned, there have been uh, some other statements that have come through. National Weather Service issuing a statement, not really a warning, but just a statement pointing out that heavy rainfall could lead to localized ponding of water, particularly in uh, Guthrie Center, Panora, Bayard, Casey, Perry, Waukee, Adel, Greenfield, Stewart, Adair. Fontenelle, Winterset, Earlham, Corning, and Creston. The line of training storms could produce some very heavy rainfall over portions of western Iowa. That could lead to localized ponding of water in low-lying areas and places with poor drainage. So please drive with caution. Do not drive onto flooded roadways. And report any flooding that you do encounter to the National Weather Service. You can do that by contacting local law enforcement and passing that along as well. So we do anticipate that there could be uh, continued very heavy rainfall that could lead to localized flooding. We also have the potential for flash flooding in some locations. We're keeping our eye on that for you as well here on News Radio 1040 WHO. Again, if you are observing uh, any kind of storm activity, feel free to give us a text on the American Toppers and Accessories text line at 515-989-1040. Standard data and message rates apply. Uh, follow, or somebody uh, texting us from Boone to report heavy rain just starting there. We've got uh, text reports here as well of power flickering on and off in Urbandale. Could very well be associated with those very strong winds that we're expecting as well. Again, remember, we do have an actual tornado warning that is in effect right now. This is uh, nothing to take lightly. A tornado warning in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties. That tornado warning is in effect until 11 o'clock tonight with a tornado possible as well as 60 mile an hour wind gusts. This is rotation that is reported or by radar indication. Any kind of flying debris that could be associated with that storm could be dangerous to anyone caught without shelter. So mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles could occur. Tree damage is also likely. We're expecting those storms to be working their way now toward perhaps about Polk City, Sailorville, Big Creek. They're uh, also looking at the possibility of that hitting uh, around Slater and Huxley. So we do want to keep our eye on all of that. It does include Interstate 35 between mile markers 92 and 100. So basically if you are in the Ankeny area, basically in the stretch between Ankeny and a little bit south there of Ames around the Huxley area, you've got the potential here for this tornadic thunderstorm to be working its way by you. A severe thunderstorm again capable of producing a tornado located near Dallas Center earlier on. That was at 1024. It is working its way to the northeast and it's doing so at about 45 miles an hour. Actually it's training mainly to the east at this stage. Uh, not, I shouldn't say northeast, it's just training mainly to the east. And so it is working its way in that direction. So we do want folks to be aware, particularly anyone who's on Interstate 35 at this stage, uh, north of the Des Moines metro area, or if you're getting just to the northern reaches of the suburbs up by Ankeny, working your way up from there up toward Ames. We want you to be in uh, complete alert condition right now that there is the potential there for those thunderstorms and for that tornadic activity to be taking place. So do be aware. We do have a tornado warning again in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties until 11 o'clock tonight. And so we're keeping our eye on that one for you. As we do, we realize that that is uh, working its way in that direction. Uh, we have, uh, we've been told here at least, uh, there are some indications here of some lowering of a cloud base up in the Ankeny area. No funnels visible though, nothing reported there. Uh, but we do know that that is a possibility. We have a brand new severe thunderstorm warning that's just been issued here as well. This severe thunderstorm warning is for southern Cass and western Adams counties in southwestern Iowa. That severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 1130 tonight with a severe thunderstorm located near Stanton, about 18 miles west of Corning, moving to the east at 35 miles an hour with 60 mile an hour wind gusts and hail up to the size of half dollars. That is radar indicated. Expecting hail damage to vehicles in that area, as well as wind damage to roofs, siding, and trees. Corning, Lake Icaria, Messina, Cumberland, Nottaway, Carbon, and uh, the Corning Municipal Airport, all in the path of that storm. And again, a tornado watch also remains in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for most of the state of Iowa. So do remain alert for possible tornadoes, which could develop very quickly from severe thunderstorms. If you do anticipate one or if you do see one, go at once into a basement or a small interior room inside a sturdy structure. We really recommend doing that for anyone at this stage because these intense thunderstorm lines could produce brief tornadoes with not a lot of warning. Also, a great deal of wind could also accompany any of these. 
so we don't want to take any kind of uh, guesses here. We want you to anticipate the possibility and be undercover as soon as possible. Again, tornado is not necessarily immediately likely, but it is best to be in an interior room on the lowest floor of a building and away from windows. Again, that's a severe thunderstorm warning for southern Cass County and western Adams County. That severe thunderstorm warning is in effect until 1130 this evening. And again, those are off to the west, so it does look like we are not going to get any respite from this for a little while here. Uh, we could be looking at a great deal of continued potential as these storms build behind one another uh, in series. So we could be facing a pretty long night here uh, as we work our way through the overnight hours. So we are also looking at the potential for some significant hail as well. And, uh, Brian, we're, uh, we've been getting lightning for a couple of minutes. Didn't want to interrupt you, but uh, now it is raining moderately uh, here near downtown Des Moines. And uh, we do have a couple of messages to bring you. And uh, then we'll get back to the coverage. Synonyms, local news, and News Radio 1040, WHO. New tornado warning now being issued. This tornado warning is now being issued, and we're going to get interrupted here in a moment uh, by the automatic activation of this. There is a tornado warning in effect now for eastern Boone County, northwestern Story County, and southeastern Hamilton. News Radio 1040 WHO, and we'd like to repeat that tornado warning issued by the National Weather Service here in Des Moines, now for eastern Boone County in central Iowa, northwestern Story County in central Iowa, and southeastern Hamilton County in central Iowa from now until 1115 tonight. At 1046, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near Iowa State Center or seven miles southwest of Ames, moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. The hazard is the tornado and quarter-size hail and 60-mile-per-hour wind gusts. The radar indicated rotation and the impacts. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. This dangerous storm will be near the Iowa State Center at around 1055. Ames and Gilbert at around 11 o'clock. Story City and Roland at around 1110. Other locations impacted by this tornadic thunderstorm include the Ames Municipal Airport, Luther, Randall, McCallsburg, and Kelly. This includes Interstate 35 between mile markers 112 and 130. Heavy rainfall may hide this tornado. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover now. 
tornadoes are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado take cover now. Again, this is for eastern Boone County, northwestern Story County, and southeastern Hamilton County until 1115. Now, good update here for us at 1051 on News Radio 1040 WHO. And again, I'm Brian Gongle, and that's Jim Beam. We're here covering that severe weather as it's working our way through central Iowa. We realize a lot of folks have been uh, losing things like satellite television coverage at this hour, so we're trying to keep everybody posted here. The tornado warning for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties has been canceled as the storm has been uh, now weakened below the severe limits and no longer appears capable of producing a tornado. Therefore, that warning has been canceled, but we are anticipating still gusty winds and heavy rain still possible with that thunderstorm. Again, a severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for the area for another 10 minutes or so, but the tornado warning that was in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties has been canceled. However, we do still have a tornado warning in effect now until 11.15 for Eastern Boone, Northwestern Story, and Southwestern Hamilton counties. Again, those are the uh, warnings that we have now. That tornado warning for Eastern Boone, Northwestern Story, and Southeastern Hamilton counties reported there. We do know that there are folks who are anticipating this and uh, are looking right now. They are expecting uh, the storm, again, in Northeastern Dallas, Southwestern Story, Northwestern Polk counties. That tornado warning has been canceled. But we are looking now at the possibility of a new tornado warning uh, that has been issued and is in effect for eastern Boone, northwestern Story, and southeastern Hamilton counties in central Iowa, again, until 1115. That joins a number of other severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect at this hour. And that remain in effect, there is that very large severe thunderstorm warning uh, that is in effect for southeastern Webster, Warren, Boone, Dallas, Madison, Story, eastern Guthrie, eastern Adair, southern Hamilton, Polk, northwestern Union, and eastern Greene counties. It's a very large severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect. 60 mile an hour winds and nickel sized hail are possible anywhere in that warned area. Separately, there's a severe thunderstorm warning for southern Cass and western Adams counties with 60-mile-an-hour winds and half-dollar-sized hail. That severe thunderstorm warning, again, for southern Cass and western Adams counties, in effect until 11.30 this evening. Flash flood warning is in effect for southwestern Pottawatomie County until 12.45. And a flash flood warning is in effect for southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties until 3.30 in the morning. We also are aware that we're looking at the potential for some potential localized flooding to take place, and uh, with the heavy rainfall that's occurring on top of ground that's gotten a bit of rain so far this, uh, this evening and so far this afternoon as well, uh, could be looking at uh, potential for additional flooding in some of these areas, especially in low-lying areas, so do not take any chances, particularly at night. Let's not be trying to cross any roadways where there is any kind of uh, standing or moving water of any sort. It uh, could be much deeper than it appears, particularly at night when we can't see it any more clearly than that. We also have the uh, threat, of course, that just a few inches of moving water would be enough to sweep a vehicle off the roadways. And again, if you're on Interstate 35 right now, uh, we need you to be particularly alert if you are anywhere basically between the northern edges of the city of Des Moines, getting up through Ankeny and working your way up farther north than that, up toward Ames or Story City. If you're in that region right now, you have both the potential for very strong winds and hail as well as this possibility uh, of a tornado that is at least indicated uh, by radar. A tornado warning in effect for eastern Boone, northwestern Story, and southeastern Hamilton counties. Uh, we have se serious concern that uh, could be out there. Public reports right now of uh, funnel clouds have come in as well in that area, so it is possible that we could be dealing uh, with, any kind, with a kind of a tornado act activity out there. We also have now uh, a revived, let's say, uh, severe thunderstorm warning, the one that is uh, set to expire at 11 o'clock. They are uh, bringing back Frankenstein-like, and it's going to be in effect until midnight now for Warren, Marshall, Northeastern Boone, Marion, Story, Southeastern Hamilton, Jasper, Southern Hardin, and Eastern Polk counties. That severe thunderstorm warning will be in effect again until midnight as this severe thunderstorm complex moves its way rather slowly off to the east. We're looking at the severe thunderstorms located along a line extending from six miles west of Story City down to about eight miles southeast of Huxley to near Carlisle, then about 10 miles south of Indianola. It's moving east at 50 miles an hour, but it's a very large storm, so it persists for some time. Looking at 60 mile an hour wind gusts and hail once again up to about the size of Nichols. 
uh, with this set of storms. Des Moines, Ames, Ankeny, Marshalltown, Newton, Indianola, Altoona, Pella, Pleasant Hill, Knoxville, Nevada, Eldora, Carlisle, Bondurant, Story City, Huxley, Mitchellville, Colfax, Monroe, and Pleasantville are all in the path of this storm. It also includes Interstate 35 between mile markers 101 and 135, so basically a bit about 10 miles south of Ames and then again at about another 20 miles north of Ames and Interstate 80 between mile markers 140 and 180. So that's off getting off to the east side of the Des Moines metro area and then moving off toward Newton. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Intense thunderstorm lines can produce brief tornadoes, as we've seen already tonight, and widespread significant wind damage. So although a tornado is not immediately likely, it is best to get to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building because these storms can produce a serious injury and significant property damage and they could potentially produce tornadoes with little or no advance warning. And again, we're looking at hail that's uh, getting up almost to the size of about an inch in diameter, just a little bit less than that, winds of about 60 miles an hour. So we're not on the high end or anything of uh, normal severe limits. We're crossing, though, the threshold into severe limits again with 60 mile an hour wind gusts and nickel-sized hail. Again, the tornado warning that was in effect for northeastern Dallas, southwestern Story, and northwestern Polk counties has been canceled, so that's the good news. However, the bad news is that a tornado warning remains in effect for eastern Boone, northwestern Story, and southeastern Hamilton counties. That's a tornado warning in effect until 11.15 this evening. We are very concerned about basically Interstate 35 between about Highway 30 around Ames up to about Story City. We need to be extremely concerned if we're on the roadways up there. We need to take shelter immediately. Uh, let's get to some substantial shelter as quickly as possible. We also know that anybody who's simply in that area, we need to be alert as well. So again, Eastern Boone, Northwestern Story, and Southeastern Hamilton counties, you're an area of concern right now. Flash flood warning also remains in effect until 3.30 in the morning for Southeastern Crawford, Cass, Southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties. Doppler radar indicating thunderstorms producing continued heavy rainfall across that warned area. Up to two inches of rain have already fallen. We are looking at that threat for flash flooding in Atlantic, Audubon, Manning, Griswold, Atnita, Exira, Manila, Elkhorn, Lewis, Templeton, Messina, Kimbleton, Dedham, Cumberland, Halber, Brayton, Marnie, Wyote, and uh, Gray, and Aspenwall. And again, be careful at night, particularly uh, when it is very difficult to recognize the dangers of flooding. So again, be very, very careful right now if you are in southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties where we have a flash flood warning that's in effect until 3.30 in the morning. So we have all of that going on. We also now have uh, some reports that are continuing to come in of that uh, potential for a tornadic threat up in eastern Boone, northwestern Story, and southeastern Hamilton counties. A severe thunderstorm warning remains in effect until 11.30 for southern Cass and western Adams counties with 60 mile an hour winds and half dollar sized hail. Flash flood warning for southwestern Pottawatomie County until 1245. A flash flood warning for southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties in effect until 330 in the morning. So we have all of that uh, continuing to go on. We do have a uh, tornado warning that was issued earlier for Montgomery County. It looks like that has been allowed to expire. So uh, that's good news, though. That was earlier threatened uh, very briefly, it appears, that there was a uh, circulation around Red Oak that was reported, uh, and that was subsequently uh, canceled and uh, not, no longer in effect. We're going to take a break here for just a moment. We'll catch up on the news, and we will come back with continued coverage of the severe weather as we do continue to have a tornadic threat here in central Iowa, particularly, again, in eastern Boone, northwestern Story, and southeastern Hamilton counties. I'm Brian Gongle, along with Jim Beam, as we're covering severe weather for you right here on News Radio 1040. WHO in Des Moines. We'll be back right after the news. Fox News Radio. I'm Bill Vitka. What they call an election, others brand illegal. They cast ballots in eastern Ukraine, voting by pro-Russian separatists hoping to legitimize their cause with what critics call an illegitimate election. To no one's surprise, the pro-Russians who put on the vote say the winners are the pro-Russians. They had already said that if this went their way, they would declare the Ukrainian authorities here to be occupiers, and they would set about forming their own state bodies. There were huge problems with this poll by any sense of the measure. This was a poll which was organized, policed, and counted by volunteers from the People's Republic themselves. There will now be a familiar round of international condemnation also from the government in Kiev who have already said this is illegal, that the whole thing is a criminal farce. Katie Stallard of Fox Sister Network, Sky News in Donetsk. Mother's Day snow plows rolled through parts of Colorado and Wyoming. 
more than a foot of new sloppy wet snow, setting off fender benders along Colorado's Interstate 70 west of Denver. Multiple accidents reported. More crack-ups along parts of Interstate 25. Snow is only one side of the storm. In the plains, that system is spinning off tornadoes, hammering parts of Nebraska. Twister touchdowns, but no report of anyone hurt. In California, a van crashed into a car, landing on top of it in the desert town of Hesperia. Five people have been killed. A fifth body was found in the mangled wreckage hours after the accident. The Pacers are now one away. They beat the Wizards 95-92. Washington down by three. Ariza looking for the open man. Can't get it to Beal. George tracks it down. Two seconds. 1.7. And it's out of bounds. Indiana's got it. As the game aired on TNT Sports, at one point Indiana was down 19. They rallied, led by Paul George, who poured in a career playoff high of 39 points and added 12 rebounds. You're listening to Fox News Radio, Fair and Balance. News Radio 10. Do you find that when you help your elementary students in math, the procedures make no sense? Maybe your child even says, that's not the way my teacher told me to do it. Well, most likely the school's using an approach called everyday math, another educational fad resulting in poor math performance, even math anxiety. Educational Resource Associates can resolve this, has the solution for everyday math problems. To learn more, click on the Educational Resource Associates banner now or call 515-225-8513. Your commute driving you to sing. In this traffic, I'm not going far. Traffic and weather on the fives. Mornings and afternoons. Beep, 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 beep. News Radio 1040 WHO. Thanks for listening. 1040 WHO online and on iHeartRadio. Your computer was new. It was lightning fast. But over time, it gradually slowed down. Go to SpeedCounts.com to get a free computer diagnosis and find out why. Just activate SpeedCounts.com software and in minutes get rid of junk and even viruses. Speed up your computer today with SpeedCounts.com. Get your free computer diagnosis in minutes and speed up your computer with SpeedCounts.com. That's SpeedCounts.com. Hi, I'm Sherry Thaler from the Welcome Home Radio Show on WHO Radio. Each week we bring in guests and talk about home decorating ideas, landscaping ideas, remodeling tips, and so many other ways to make your home just right for your lifestyle. So don't miss the Welcome Home Radio Show. Welcome Home with Sherry Thaler. Heard every Saturday from noon until 1 on News Radio 1040 WHO. Moving east at 50 miles an hour. The hazard is 60 mile per hour wind gusts and nickel size hail. And uh, the impact, expect damage to roof, siding, and trees. Locations impacted include Des Moines, Ames, Ankeny, Marshalltown, Newton, Indianola, Altoona, Pella, Pleasant Hill, Knoxville, Nevada, Eldora, Carlisle, Bondurant, Story City, Huxley. Mitchellville, Colfax, Monroe, and Pleasantville. This includes the following highways. Interstate 35 between mile markers 101 and 135. Interstate 80 between mile markers 140 and 180. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Intense thunderstorm lines can produce brief tornadoes and widespread significant wind damage. Although a tornado is not immediately likely, it is best to move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. These storms may cause serious injury and significant property damage. And again, we, we have an update as well here. The uh, National Weather Service has canceled the tornado warning that was in effect for eastern Boone County as that storm has moved out of that warned area. So they've canceled the tornado warning for eastern Boone County. However, a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado is located over Gilbert right now. Moving, uh, It's near Ames and it's moving northeast at 45 miles an hour. That is radar indicated rotation and flying debris could be very dangerous to anyone caught without shelter. Mobile homes could be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows and vehicles could occur. Tree damage is also likely. They're expecting that storm near Roland around 1110. And again, we should also point out uh, folks in Randall and McCallsburg are also in the path of that storm, as well as anyone on Interstate 35 between mile markers 117 and 130. So again, on Interstate 35 between mile markers 117 and 130, you are in the path of a tornadic thunderstorm 
Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building and avoid windows. If you're in a mobile home, a vehicle, or outdoors, we need you to get to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Heavy rainfall could be hiding this tornado, so do not wait to see or hear the tornado take cover immediately. They are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night, so do not wait to see or hear a tornado take cover right now. So again, a tornado warning for eastern Boone County has been canceled, but a tornado warning remains in effect for northwestern Story and southeastern Hamilton counties until 1115 this evening. Again, that's a tornado warning, and it does include a stretch of Interstate 35. That's between mile markers 117 and 130. So we are keeping our eye on that for you. There is also, of course, a severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect until 1130 for southern Cass and western Adams counties. That will be in effect again until 1130. Winds up to 60 miles an hour with half dollar sized hail, likely with that storm. A severe thunderstorm warning is in effect for Warren, Marshall, Northeastern Boone, Marion, Story, Southeastern Hamilton, Jasper, Southern Hardin, and Eastern Polk counties. That severe thunderstorm warning in effect until midnight. 60 mile an hour winds with nickel sized hail likely there. Additionally, we have flash flood warnings in effect. One is in effect for southwestern Pottawatomie County until 1245, and flash flood warning in effect for southeastern Crawford, Cass, southwestern Carroll, and Audubon counties until 3.30 in the morning. So we do have threats here about uh, flash flooding that could be taking place. Again, as these storms are coming through here, uh, in addition to having a great deal of uh, rain falling, we're also looking at the potential for uh, flooding to occur along with that rain that is occurring. So we do want you to be aware, uh, not just in the warned areas right now for flash flood areas, but also a good portion of the state of Iowa as we're having these storms work their way through. It is entirely possible that we could see additional storms, uh, an additional flash flooding threat as well. So anybody who's traveling right now, we want you to be particularly aware of the uh, threat for moving water or even standing water in areas where the standing water could be sitting over an area where roads or bridges have been washed out. So we want people to be concerned about that. And any kind of moving water, it only takes a couple of inches uh, to take a car and sweep it right off the roadway. So we do want you to be concerned about that. But again, the tornado potential right now is the one that is uh, most grave threat and the most immediate threat right now. And that's for Northwestern Story and Southeastern Hamilton counties under that tornado warning until 1115. So another couple of moments left on that. So we're keeping our eye on that as well. We've got reports coming in now from uh, amateur radio and others reporting hail that was up to an inch in portions of Urbandale with small tree limbs downed in that area. And of course, we're also getting uh, reports in other places here about uh, the damage that has occurred. You're welcome, of course, to text us on the American Toppers and Accessories text line at 515-989-1040. Standard data and message rates apply, but you can text us with your updates and your warnings, or your, rather your experiences here with updates on damage that you may have encountered or anything that you may be seeing at this time. We do want you, of course, to be taking cover and taking care of yourself immediately. First and foremost, your safety is the uh, primary concern here, and we don't want anybody to be under any kind of threat of uh, injury. So don't be going outside to try to observe this. This is just if you've already observed it and uh, have reported it or would like to get it reported in here, we're happy to get that uh, update. Uh, of course, we've also been hearing from our friends uh, up in Boone, where we're hearing from uh, Anna up there that they encountered hail about 1045. Looks like they might have gotten a bit of a break in that now, but again, uh, they also have been taken out of the tornado warning that they were under previously, but again, the tornado warning stays in effect for northwestern Story and southeastern Hamilton counties. That's in effect here for about another five minutes. We're going to stay at least live with you here until we know about the status of that. Uh, we've seen uh, wind gusts reported here up to 70 miles an hour here, even in portions of uh, Des Moines and central Iowa. So we're seeing reports of that. Uh, we're also getting uh, folks reporting here that uh, came into dispatch in the Polk County Sheriff's Department uh, that there were folks who reported earlier perhaps a uh, what looked like some kind of a lowering of the clouds. So uh, we do know that there is the possibility that uh, there may have been some damage. And, of course, it will take until the morning before we're able to do any kind of storm surveys on a lot of this. Uh, but we do know that there is a rather intense line of storms that have been working their way through and that we're looking at uh, continued threat of uh, some severe storms working their way through as a good portion of the state of Iowa remains under a tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the morning. And at last report again here, about uh, six, seven, eight minutes ago, a severe thunderstorm was capable of producing a tornado located near Gilbert, near Ames. It was actually over Gilbert, near Ames, moving to the northeast at 45 miles an hour. And that was radar-indicated rotation, not confirmed rotation uh, by spotters, but there is radar-indicated rotation. Uh, and that was what was uh, indicated up there again over Gilbert, uh, moving near Ames, moving to the northeast at 45 miles an hour. Roland should be experiencing that storm right about now. That is possible that they're... Uh, 
experiencing that at this stage, as well as Interstate 35 between mile markers 117 and 130. So we do want you to take cover if you're in those areas. If you're in a mobile home or vehicle or outdoors, let's get to substantial shelter and protect yourself from the potential for flying debris. That is the main threat here uh, with the tornado is that threat of flying debris, and we want folks to be well aware of that fact and to take precautions from it. And it uh, looks like the storms are going to continue building here. It does not look like uh, we're going to get respite here. That might be uh, a little bit easier on us for a little while here. Uh, but we do, of course, still have uh, additional severe thunderstorms that are off to our west as well, so it doesn't look like they're going to go away entirely. Uh, we do continue to have a severe thunderstorm warning that's in effect for southern Cass and western Adams counties in uh, west central Iowa. That's got 60 mile an hour winds with half dollar sized hail. So as that continues going, uh, we could very well see those storms working their way as uh, the rest of them have moving their way from west to east. So we've got another line of storms uh, that are likely to push their way through here and through central Iowa and in the Des Moines area. So we do want to be acutely aware of that. And again, uh, public reports of uh, funnel clouds up by us uh, in Story County, so up in Roland, so a bit north of Ames. So we've had public reports of that, not confirmed or anything. However, we do know that they are still under that tornado warning until 11.15. Uh, actually, as I, the moment I say that, the Des Moines National Weather Service office uh, canceling now that tornado warning, or at least allowing it to expire at 11:15, as they do now believe that the storm has gone below severe limits and no longer appears capable of producing a tornado. But again, a tornado watch remains in effect until 3 o'clock in the morning for a good portion of the state of Iowa. Let's quickly recap those areas under a tornado watch. What again that means is that there is the potential for tornadic activity to take place. We do know that the storms are strong. They have been working their way through, and we will see a series or a succession of those storms. So let's very briefly here recap some of those areas that are under that tornado watch, the counties uh, that are included. How about we take them about uh, six at a time here, Jim? Oh, <laughs> quite okay. a few. Hi. We do have Adair, Adams, Appanoose, Audubon, Blackhawk, and Boone counties. And then as well as uh, Bremer, Butler, Calhoun, Carroll, Cass, Clark, Crawford, Dallas, Davis, Decatur, Franklin, Green, Grundy, Guthrie, Hamilton, Hardin, Humboldt, Jasper, Lucas, Madison, Mahaska, Marion, Marshall, Monroe, Pocahontas, Polk, Powashik, Ringgold, Sack, Story, Tama, Taylor, Union, Wapolo, Warren, Wayne, Webster, and Wright counties all under a tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the morning. And then again, uh, that is the area that is in a tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the morning, meaning that the potential exists for tornadoes to occur, and you should be alert to that possibility and anticipating that possibility. And let's uh, stay attuned to that, uh, particularly by staying tuned here to News Radio 1040 WHO, where I'm Brian Gongle, and uh, along with Jim Beam, as we're covering the severe weather working its way through the state of Iowa tonight. And it looks like uh, here at 1113, uh, the rain in downtown Des Moines is letting up a little. But we are still under a severe thunderstorm warning until 12 midnight for uh, eastern Polk County, southern Hardin County, Jasper County, southeastern Hamilton County, Story County, Marion County, northeastern Boone County, Marshall County, Warren County, all uh, in central Iowa and in the metro area. 60 mile an hour wind gusts and nickel size hail still possible and expect damage to roofs, siding, and trees. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. Intense thunderstorm lines can produce brief tornadoes and widespread significant wind damage. Although a tornado is not immediately likely, it is best to move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. These storms may cause serious injury and significant property damage. And we are still under the uh, tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the morning for most of Iowa. As uh, Brian just read that whole list. And as we mentioned as well, the uh, severe thunderstorm threat continues. The National Weather Service here in Des Moines has just issued a severe thunderstorm warning for southeastern Cass, Adair, northwestern Union, and northern Adams counties. That severe thunderstorm warning will be in effect until 12 o'clock. Those areas are to the west of Des Moines, and the storms are moving their way to the northeast, so do be aware. Severe thunderstorms were located along a line extending from 12 miles southeast of Atlantic to 7 miles north of Lake Icaria near Corning, moving to the northeast at 40 miles an hour. Those, again, that was at 11.11, so just a few minutes ago, with 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts and hail up to the size of quarters. That is radar indicated, but hail damage to vehicles is expected and do expect damage to roofs as well as siding and trees. So areas that are in the path of that set of severe thunderstorms includes Greenfield, Stewart, 
Green Valley Lake, Fontanelle, Orient, Messina, Bridgewater, Carbon, Nottoway Park, Green Valley Lake State Park, and the Greenfield Municipal Airport. It also includes Interstate 80 between mile markers 84 and 96. So again, that area, the severe thunderstorm warned area, in, is in southeastern Cass, Adair, northwestern Union, and northern Adams counties in southwestern and south central Iowa. That will be in effect until midnight tonight. It's in addition to the uh, severe thunderstorm warning that remains in effect here closer into central Iowa and moving its way off to the north and east. So we're going to keep our eye on all of that for you here on WHO Radio. So we continue to have those uh, threats and those continued warnings. Uh, fortunately for us, though, we do not have any tornado warnings that are presently in effect right now. Uh, so we can uh, fortunately perhaps step back a little bit from some of this coverage, uh, give ourselves a, a bit of a moment to recoup ourselves, and also to continue to cover uh, the additional incoming storms. Because once again, even though the one set of storms that has now moved through Des Moines and the immediate Des Moines metropolitan area, that's now moving off to the east. There is a new set of storms now brewing about 60 miles to our west. Those are going to be moving their way through as well. A lot of travelers going to be affected by this. Uh, Interstate 80 is going to be a bit unpleasant for folks between Des Moines and uh, the Omaha Council Bluffs area. So we want folks to be aware of that as well. If you're on the uh, very heavily traveled stretch of road there, be acutely aware of that possibility as well. We're going to keep our eyes on that for you as well. It is 1117. I'm Brian Gongle. Along with Jim Beam, we're going to take a moment to step away, and we'll continue severe weather coverage as necessary. But for the time being, since the immediate tornadic threat has passed, we'll be stepping back and uh, returning you to some regular programming here in just a moment. It is 1117 on News Radio 1040 WHO.